Hi everyone, it's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. Today is Sunday, May 9th, 2021, and I am in another conference this weekend. I am attending the Lemonade Conference, and that is put on by the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants. And I'm learning lots about animal training and applied behavior and ethology and evolution. And I'm going to pass on, as always, what I learned to all of you. But it's going to have to be a tradition now that on weekends when I'm in a conference that we just do a vlog instead of a designated Serpente Sunday video. So for Serpente Sunday today, we're going to have another vlog. And I have an hour lunch break, and so I'm going to do all of my snake checks. And... I think there are a couple of snakes that want, want out. I noticed that Tau said he was awake and he looked like he wanted out earlier. And I'll see if anyone else is in a similar uh, situation. So I'm just gonna walk around and check on all the snakes. I make sure that any lighting or heating that I have set up for them is working. I make sure that I can at least see each animal or know where they all are. And that's really easy to do with carpet pythons and brettles pythons and pretty much anything in the genus Morelia because they're visible a lot. I see one of the corn snakes is awake for some reason. That's kind of unusual for him to be awake and out and about during the day. Let me turn the camera around so you can get a better view. This is Gary Seven. He is one of two corn snakes that arrived here a couple of years ago after being shipped improperly by the person who sent them. They were lost by FedEx. They were in transit for four days and I was seriously stressed. I don't think I slept for that whole week. And eventually they were tracked down. My husband went so far as to go up to the Colorado Springs Airport in the middle of the night and get FedEx to let him in so that he could search through packages. And they were actually very accommodating and let him do that. Anyway, we eventually found Gary Seven and his clutch mate, Roberta Lincoln, they arrived. They had a little bit of a rough start, but now they're doing great and thriving. This area is kind of in disarray because I've changed some animals out of enclosures and I have some stuff stored over here in this area that's usually an exercise space. However, this is the enclosure upgrade for our rat snake. I think it's a Korean rat snake. It was sold to us as an Alafe shrinkii, but I actually think it's an Alafe animala. I don't know if you can see him, he's in this net. I will try to get a different angle. This is a little bit better angle that allows you to see him. His name is Sargon. He just went from a smaller terrarium to this 36 inch by 36 inch by 18 inch exoterra and he is actually really loving it. He's using all the space in it. That's his old terrarium inside. I just took the top off so he can climb out and utilize the rest of the space in this new setup. And here we have TC, who as I thought is at the door and indicating that he wants out. And for the last Super Dwarf Sunday, I produced an episode about how I redid his enclosure. I remodeled it. And he's doing extremely, extremely well with this remodeling idea. He loves the ledges and shelves. I have not seen him fall and he is utilizing his space more efficiently and more effectively. However, it hasn't stopped him from wanting out pretty much every day. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Out. The 
the door is opening. Hey, don't let yourself get smushed by the sliding door. There you go. You're out. You're out. You're loose. I wasn't planning on being your bridge to wherever it is you think you're going. You can just come out on your own. You know how to do that. Good boy. And he's off. He usually climbs across this dog crate and across the blankets on top of it, over here to that tree, across that enclosure, and then he sits on that scale. Or he climbs down onto the floor and underneath the couch, and then stealthily, or he thinks stealthily, makes his way down the hallway into the other room where he either sits on the rodent freezer or he makes his way into my office area and he sits behind me on that activity station in my office. So I don't know what he'll end up doing today, but I just open the door generally and let him choose what he wants to do. I let him come out in his own time and then he can decide what he wants to do for the day. I just check on him every few minutes and make sure I know where he's at and that he isn't doing anything to endanger himself or others. This enclosure belongs to one of my Darwin carpet pythons and her name is Jayla and she is two years old, going on three years old this year. And she likes to spend her time during the day in this elevated cave. And she's squishing herself in there, as you can see. And I don't know what I'm going to do when she outgrows this cave because I'm not sure Mad Naturals makes any larger magnetic cave so I might have to somehow make my own because I mean she spends a lot of time in there every day during the day that's where she is and then at night she comes out and climbs around and ends up down here on this bridge that somebody gave to me which I'm guessing is for a fish tank but she coils up along this bridge with her sides you know with her body in between these edges and that's where she spends most nights and she just looks out the door and uh, is ready in case I decide to feed her. This is Sun Shower. She is a Jaguar carpet python that I got before I knew anything about Jaguar carpet pythons and them having neurological issues. She has severe neurological issues and several times I've thought that we were gonna have to take her into the veterinarian to be euthanized. And her neurologic symptoms keep changing, some apparently for the better, but then other things get worse. So she is able to ambulate better these days. She can climb and perch and she's pretty physically active. However, she can't eat and she can't swallow. It's a condition in people they call neurologic dysphagia. So she has to be fed with a stomach tube. And I was a little bit concerned when I tried to feed her last time that it didn't go well, but then she shed the next day and gave me a complete, really healthy shed. And so I'm not so sure that the feeding just didn't go well because she was about to shed. So I'm gonna give her a little more time and see how she does with the feeding Next time, I don't want to make a rash decision about euthanasia or not. And unfortunately, I can't know what's in her mind. I can't ask her what she would want. And I have to try to make that determination. And it's one of the hardest things to have to do for an animal. So TC's climbing over here on Kinsey's enclosure. He is a Brettles python that lives sort of next to TC. And I'm not really sure where TC's going with his adventure today. So I'm just gonna take it upon myself to bring him into my office. 
because my conference starts again in about a half an hour. I need to grab something to eat. And I just don't feel like having to run it into this room, two rooms away, to check constantly on TC. So I will see if he wants to maybe spend some time on this activity station. He spent all day yesterday on this particular activity station. So it looks like he's good going on to this. And I'll show you a better view of this entire station once TC gets off my arm. He uses me as an anchor point quite a lot. And that's because he's learned to associate me with safety and stability. And so he will grip onto me until he's made the decision to go elsewhere. So I'll turn this around so you can get a full view of this station. So here is this activity station. It's just a cat stand and I have a few things stored near the bottom, but it has several levels. It's mostly wood and some rope. And TC now is on that middle level, but the levels go up really, really close to the ceiling. And in fact, I usually have a bird perch sitting on top of that very top level and it does reach the ceiling, but I moved it the other day to put a snake away. One of my Poplin carpet pythons, Natoth, was using that perch and instead of uncoiling her from the perch, I just moved the whole perch and took her back to her enclosure. All right, TC. Be a good boy, I have stuff to do. Okay, so let me just finish up this vlog with some news and upcoming events and give you guys an idea about what the future of the channel looks like, which won't be much different. This channel is for educational purposes. 100% I started this channel to spread good news and positive information and evidence-based scientific information about animals of all kinds, but specifically snakes, because they are so underrepresented in the animal training and behavior world. And I really wanna celebrate the snake and everything that's great about all of the snake species that we share our planet with. And so here is what my plan is come June, 2021. And I say June, 2021, because I am just insanely busy finishing up a few projects right now and finishing up some educational things that I have been enrolled in over the past few months. On June 11th, I will pretty much be finished with everything for about a month and I'll have a month off. I just finished um, a course in animal ethology. I just finished a course in advanced instrumental learning. I just attended a conference in The Power of Choice. I just finished um, the conference for the Animal Behavior Management Alliance. I'm in a conference this weekend for the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants. And next weekend, I'm in a four-day conference for the Animal Shelter Play Group Alliance. I can't remember their name exactly but they specifically focus on animals that are in shelters or shelter-like situations, like we run an animal sanctuary here, and so it's very applicable to what we do. So I'm quite busy with a lot of professional conferences and continuing education. Then on June 11th, I graduate from a program at the University of Washington in applied animal behavior. So I'll have a month off and then I will start graduate studies at a different university in animal health and behavior. And I do so much continuing education, not only because I enjoy it and I want to learn as much as I can about animals in general, but specifically about how to care for them in the best way that I can and about their behavior and training. I wanna share that information with you. And I especially wanna share that information as to how it applies to reptiles and specifically snakes, because again, snakes are very underrepresented in animal behavior and in animal training circles. And I want to promote how wonderful these animals are, how many interesting and exciting behaviors that I see in them and how well they are at learning and the amazing things that I've been able to guide them to learn how to do. They're just doing phenomenally well in their training here. 
And so I want to continue down that road and I want to make sure that the information that I'm presenting on the channel is well vetted information, that it's backed up by research, that it's backed up by empirical evidence. And if it's not, I will usually say, this is just speculation or this is just my opinion. And then if it's backed up by actual facts, I will always cite those in the video description or at the end of my um, class presentations, but somewhere you will be able to go back to the original sources where I got the information and read those or watch those or look those up for yourself. So my plan for June is to start our series on Royals at the Ranch, which is going to be every Thursday, a segment about the Royal Pythons, Python Regis, that have joined our family here at Behavior Education. That is not going to be a typical series about this is what a ball python is, this is what they eat, this is how long they live, these are their different color morphs. It's not going to be anything to do with that because there's literally thousands of videos and websites and Facebook pages and other social media about those things in regards to Python Regis. So my content in regards to Python Regis is going to be why they're here in the first place because they were never a species that I intended to keep. I am very much into Australian pythons. I love Australian pythons. I have a lot of them here and that's my main area of focus. So the series is going to be why do I have royal pythons here? Why you will hear me refer to them as royal pythons and not ball pythons? and information about what we've observed here in regards to their behavior when given a plethora of opportunities to make behavioral choices on their own and what I've observed as I have started a training program with them. So our series about Royal Pythons is going to be about the specific animals that we have here and why they're here, how they were picked out, the project that initially brought them here and our observations of their behavior and trainability and temperament. So it's gonna be all about training and behavior, which you should have known, and it really isn't gonna be about other Royal Python facts. Although as I learn more about Royal Pythons and some of those more mundane facts, I may throw those in as I learn, but primarily it's going to be these individuals that are living here with us at the ranch and their training and behavior and the work that we do with them. The other series that I'm going to start in June is going to be a series that's going to be several Serpente Sundays episodes about building resiliency in animals, specifically how to guide our snakes to become more resilient and be able to deal with potential adverse circumstances that they may encounter during their lifetime. Snakes may live a very long time. There are a few species that don't live that long, maybe up to 10 years, but there are plenty of species that could live 20, 30 years or more. And it's unrealistic to think during that time frame that nothing adverse is going to happen to them. Many animals, and that includes humans, are born with a high level of innate resiliency that we can just bounce back from adversity, no problem, shake it off and move on as if nothing happened. And then there's a whole nother range of that spectrum where some organisms are born with very little resiliency. Everything affects them every, in a negative way. Everything bothers them. They are not very resilient to bouncing back from adversity or change. They just don't have a high level of toughness when it comes to things happening to them. And then you have a group in the middle that are born or hatched with a certain amount of innate resiliency and it's not really high but it's not really low and those are the ones that we are actually able to guide to become more resilient we're actually able to help them over time build more resiliency to all of those things that might occur during their lifetime that may cause them distress so i'm going to start a whole series about how we do that and it's not done by throwing everything at them at once and saying, here you go, sink or swim. That's called flooding and it actually has an adverse effect on animals. No, I'm going to go over gradual desensitization. I'm going to go over how we can build up our animals confidence and resiliency by providing them with challenging circumstances that we know they're able to navigate successfully 
and how we can set up problem solving tasks for them that they are able to um, complete successfully. And all of that builds their resiliency and builds their confidence. I'm also going to go over how to smoothly transition your snakes from the circumstances they found themselves in as hatchlings or at a breeders to however you want to keep those animals and how you can make that transition smooth for them, building resiliency along the way so that they are experiencing no stress or the appropriate amount of stress, but they're not being pushed to the point where they're distressed. And we're going to talk about all of that. And I'm really excited about it because it's something that can apply not just to snakes, but to us and to all animals. But I'm going to use snakes as an example, including a case study with one of our Morelia Bradley here named John Shepherd, who was just hatched last July. And I have followed him over six months and I have a lot of video documenting his first six months here, arriving from a breeder where he was kept in a rack being put into a transport tub and then gradually transitioned from that transport tub to a small terrarium all the way to a five foot by two foot by two foot enclosure that he's in now. And I'm also going to be showing you the training progression that he's gone through in that six months. And he has done that smoothly without a hitch. He's done that without any distress. He's been challenged appropriately. He's dealt with those challenges successfully and he's become a more and more confident animal has, as time has gone on. And I'm really excited to share his story with you. So that's what you can look forward to. We're just gonna go check on TC and see what he's doing. And I'm going to sign off and tell you how much I appreciate all of your views and all of you that are subscribing both on YouTube and on our Patreon. It really helps me out a lot because I not only am personally financing all of the behavior and training work that we're doing here, but a lot of my personal money goes into the 501c3 nonprofit animal sanctuary that we run, and I am having to pay for my own education. And that's all on a fixed income from my city retirement. It is paycheck to paycheck, so to speak. So I appreciate your support on YouTube. I appreciate your support on Patreon. And I really just appreciate your willingness to learn and to learn factual information about all of the wonderful animals here and specifically to learn factual information about snakes, especially in the venue of behavior and training, because again, it's really underrepresented amongst reptiles in general, but specifically among snakes. So let's go check in with TC. And until next time, everybody, please remember to love your animals, always be kind, and tune in next Sunday for another episode of Serpente Sunday, which will be another vlog because I will be in another conference. TC, what are you doing? I have to get something to eat and then I have to go back into my conference where I'm very excited to listen in about 15 minutes to Dr. Susan Friedman, who I've studied with quite a bit talk about why it is so important to have trainers and behaviorists who adhere to the least intrusive principle. That is what her lecture is going to be about and her question and answer period is going to be about. Isn't that exciting, Tausetti? Aren't you just really excited? Do you want to sit behind me while I watch that lecture? I'm not quite done. I just have to give a shout out to the Animals at Home podcast and to Dylan Perrin who produces that podcast and does a phenomenal job picking out guests and talking in such a thoughtful and logical way to every guest that's on the podcast. And I've been very appreciative of the fact that he's had me on the podcast a couple of times. And I just wanted to let you know that I realized as I started editing this video that this is the exact same t-shirt I had on for last week's, uh, or, or the vlog that I did two weeks ago where I was in the other conference. So I guess this must be my conference t-shirt. It's from the Animals at Home podcast. It's really, really nice tri-blend soft material. And I guess that's why I choose it to wear when I'm sitting at my computer in these virtual conferences because I want to be comfortable. So I wanted to give Dylan and his podcast a shout out 
And next weekend, when I'm in the other conference, I'll try to remember to wear a different t-shirt. Thanks everybody and have a great rest of your weekend and a fantastic week.